in classical mechanics when this person in this court leaves point A with zero kinetic energy, the maximum they'll reach is point C. There's no way they'll reach D or E. However, in quantum mechanics, this isn't the case. So because of the wave nature of the particles, they can go through this gap and reach point E. So it can be shown like this. This is called quantum tunneling. And there's a finite probability that these electrons can tunnel through this energy gap. This is shown here. So as you can see, the amplitude of the wave represents the probability of finding a particle in a certain region. So the large probability is imagine an electron going this way. And now it's, it's acting as a wave in this case. And there's a barrier which it normally wouldn't have the energy to pass through. But because it's a wave, it can tunnel through that. And you can see that there's a the amplitude here isn't zero. There's a chance they can go through the barrier and the amplitude here isn't zero either. So there's a tiny probability that I can get through. The probability of it tunneling through can be increased by making the gap uh, narrower. So if the smaller the gap, the higher the probability that electrons can tunnel through that gap. A scanning tunneling microscope is uses quantum tunneling to form images of the surface of different materials. A potential difference is applied between the sample and the tip like this. This means the electrons can tunnel across this gap. Then the tip, the scan tip, is moved towards the right. So as it moves left and right, the gap size decreases here. So as you can see, in this point, it's going to be very small. Because the gap size is smaller, the probability that the electron will tunnel from the scanning tip to the sample is greater. So the current increases. This is used to make an image of the sample. But this, the tip doesn't just move left and right, it can also move back and forth. So you can get a two-dimensional picture like this, where you can see a higher intensity, a larger current on top of the atoms, and a smaller current in the dips. Then this can also be used to form a three-dimensional picture like this. The scanning tip normally needs to be kept at least one nanometer from the sample. This is because of de Broglie's equation. The wavelength, Planck's constant over the momentum. At room temperature, the electrons have a momentum corresponding to a wavelength of one nanometer. So it needs to be at least one nanometer is away the tip in order for some there to be a probability that the electrons can tunnel across. However, the piezoelectric transducer, which is used to move the tip up and down, has a sensitivity of 0.01 nanometers. It's called piezoelectric because you can use a voltage to alter the, the length of it. So it can be made longer or shorter using a small voltage. The scanning tunneling microscope has two modes of function. One of them is called the constant height mode, where the probe tip is kept at a constant vertical height as it sweeps across the surface. The current will change as a result. The current will be smallest when the gap is biggest, because the probability of the electron tunneling cross is very small. But then, for example, at this point, it will increase by a small amount the current will be the largest at this point where the gap size is biggest. So this is used to plot a, a graph like this. So here in this case, it will look a bit like this. And of course, it can sweep back and forth as well. The second mode is called the constant current mode. Here, they use a feedback loop to ensure that the, the gap size between the tip and the sample is always kept constant. So the probe's height is always changing. The probe's, probe's height can be changed using the piezoelectric transducer where you just apply a small voltage to make the, the piezoelectric transducer longer or shorter. The end result is still the same. Now what we're plotting instead is the height of the tip against position and you still get the same shape graph.